Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Sustainable Foods Investor Webinar. Um, thanks for your time today. I'm Matthew Lineker, one of the, the growth directors of um, Snowball Effect. Um, a bit of housekeeping, in case you're encountering any technical difficulties, don't worry, um, we're sending a recording round after the, um, after the webinar today. Um, we were hoping to announce Plant's new high-profile sportsperson, investor, and brand ambassador today. Um, and have them answer some questions. But unfortunately, the news is embargoed um, until next week. So we'll have to save that excitement for the national news announcement after Omicron and the protest in Wellington take the back seat in the press. Um, but you'll be able to see a Q&A with them next week alongside that announcement. Uh, just to give you a quick update of where we're at with the raise so far. So we're sitting at um, over half a million invested, um, which is over a third of the way there with, with, um, with Two weeks remaining, over two weeks remaining. Um, so we're in a good place. Um, however, as per a question we received during the week um, around when to invest during the process, I'd encourage you not to wait to invest. If you're excited about the company uh, and the opportunity, and if you've reviewed the information and, and are happy with it and asked all the questions you wanted to, I'd encourage you to invest as soon as you're ready. Um, so today we've got three members of the Sustainable Foods team um, on the call who will give you a brief update of the business and presentation around uh, their growth story and um, then we'll leave a few minutes at the end for some questions but i'd encourage you to submit questions as the webinar progresses in the q a sorry the ask a question um tab at the bottom of your screen um if we run out of time don't worry we'll get all the questions answered and we'll flip them around to everyone after the the webinar has finished okay so for now it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to the three members of the sustainable foods team on the webinar today we've got justin lemons lemons the ceo and uh, co-founder we've got kyron ray the other co-founder and business and development uh, direct manager and michelle lemons um, who's over in singapore who is a member of the advisory board welcome everyone thanks very much matthew um my question for all of us is what if we could create tasty delicious nutritious plant-based protein alternatives that better nourish ourselves and nurture the planet. Hi, I'm Justin, as Matthew's mentioned, uh, CEO of Sustainable Foods. For myself, I have 25 years experience in creating delicious, tasty food, both here in New Zealand and beyond. For me, my passion is building things, whether that's bricks and mortar facility, a recipe, a process, a business, a brand, and most importantly, a team to deliver on our strategy. Um, for me, the journey with Sustainable Foods started three years ago by investing um, with Kai, my co-founder, um, on a journey of better nourishing ourselves, uh, my four children, and for the betterment of New Zealand and the planet. I hope you enjoy uh, today and the, and the story that we've got to share with you. And I'd like to hand over to Michelle in Singapore for an introduction. Let's go to Kai, shall we, while we wait for Michelle? Yeah, sure. Good idea. Thanks, man. Uh, well, we'll just add that to the list of technical challenges this morning. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, ko Kai re rei tōku ngoa, no mai, haere mai ki Sustainable Foods. Um, hello, my name's Kai and Ray. I'm co-founder with Justin of Sustainable Foods. Um, my background is in chefing. Um, some people call me a reformed chef uh, with 25 years' experience across uh, the hospitality and manufacturing industries in Australia and New Zealand. Um, one of my core drivers is to enable a resource conscious diet and food system within New Zealand. Um, thank you all very much for taking the time to be here. Uh, life's busy, so thank you for the opportunity to um, have this quote at all with you. Thank you. And is Michelle back? Doesn't look like it. So why don't you guys crack on and, and we'll try and bring her in a bit later. Cool. Cool. So leading in with the uh, with the joke of the day, um, this is uh, what a vegetable burger used to look like. And now what we actually, what our product looks like today. So for a quick snippet, we're going to share the next uh, next short video with you.
Fantastic. Um, hope you enjoy that wee snippet, and, and we'll get to share a little bit more of that uh, that later as well. And knowing that their volume turned up too loudly. <laughs> So for us, our vision at Sustainable Foods is to be a leading innovator and provider of delicious, nutritious, plant-based protein products that better nourish ourselves, as I mentioned, and also nurture our planet. So for us, our tasty food is NZ made, a real key point, using thoughtfully sourced natural ingredients. We really believe in empowering conscious consumption, and we're trying to do that without any compromises. We really embrace a field to plate approach, um, which drives our choices around our ingredients, what type of ingredients, where they come from, and the impact that they actually have on our nutrition, our production processes, and the inputs to that, and minimizing any waste throughout that journey, the packaging choices that we actually make to get our product to our consumers in the best condition possible, while minimizing sustainable impacts. And then also, if we look down to the bottom of the slide, um, we've selected our seven SDG goals, so the Sustainable Development Goals, um, put out by the United Nations, which are a key driver for business and governments and organisations in coming years. And so for us, we're developing a sustainable strategy uh, that provides us with a recognised measurement system and disclosure around that. We really wrap that together at our core uh, under Kaitiakitanga, being guardianship of our resources and people, supported by certified sourcing and measurement. Our four pillars, um, and we keep this really easy and straightforward, and we'll come back to these images later as well. We stand on nutrition, sustainability, planet pleasing, New Zealand provenance, so proudly New Zealand made, and a great tasting choice because we know that we must be led by taste to be successful. If we talk about who our consumers are, Currently, the latest statistics out are that 43% of the global population are identifying as flexitarians or people who are actually looking to actively reduce their meat consumption. And this is not a, a, a trend or a blip. Um, you know, the, the consumers within these groups are multi-generational from Gen Z through to boomers. And we've got people who are making these decisions for different reasons. We've got a rapid increase of vegetarian and vegan eaters. But again, we're appealing to the wider um, category of consumer. The primary reasons people are making these different choices is around healthier options, high nutritional value, and that's a key point in terms of what we offer in terms of protein content that Kai will talk about later. Better tasting, because it's got to be good again. And then ethical and kind of living choices, both for the environment and animal welfare. For us, our business strategy is really key. We're focused on growth. That's in the, in the New Zealand market first, um, across the four channels, being retail, our supermarket partners, hospitality, which includes cafes, restaurants, and also our QSR partners, so our quick service restaurants, that Kai will talk about some of our partners there shortly. Um, the third emerging category, which is our meal kit companies, and then the last, which is B2C, or direct to consumer, that we hope to be offering later this year. And then in addition to that is the, the growth driven through export, and we're looking to a pilot launch in mid-2022. Our next point of strategy is increased local ingredient sourcing, and Kai will talk about that shortly with him. We want to continue the development of our products, focusing on novel proteins, especially New Zealand-based proteins, where we can build consumer awareness through experiencing our product and social engagement, implement the sustainability framework, embracing a field to plate approach, and also growing our, our experience to motivate a team to deliver on the business plan. Thanks, Justin. So that's the business strategy. Um, and I'm gonna give you a little bit about our approach to product. So natural nutrition that tastes great is key and addressing the plant-based elephant in the room, not highly processed. So what we're able to achieve today using naturally based techno uh, food technology is streaks ahead of what we could do even five years ago. We're focused then on targeted yeasts for flavor and umami, we've given, uh, we carry nutrients which are naturally carried by minimally processed plant-based proteins. The rest moves into the realms of, of protein cross-linking and technical cap capabilities, which is otherwise known as plant-based wizardry. One of our key points of difference and a fantastic opportunity for some storytelling 
is our utilization of New Zealand grown hemp processed on sites in Taranaki using a private hydroelectricity plant. So if your sustainability box wasn't ticked, that's probably time to get your pen out. Delivering a complete amino acid profile, hemp is also the most carbon efficient, uh, efficient carbon sink of any commercial crop in the world, including forestry. Going forward with project backing from the Callahan, from Callahan Innovation, we'll be researching other novel proteins that are viable for the New Zealand topography, as well as creating other product flows. This will provide farmers with a less intensive, high value option for land use change and fulfill our ongoing commitment to migrate our ingredient sourcing to New Zealand origin. Thanks, Kai. Just to touch on um, local sourcing and uh, our, uh, our journey to actually improve those percentages, with our white meat alternate, um, which is our hemp chicken, uh, we have a partnership in place with uh, Reddit Institute, which is part of Massey University, so New Zealand's foremost food and agri-research institute, and also Greenfern Industries, who Kai has mentioned, are a sustainable hemp growing company based in South Taranaki. So we own that IP jointly, and Sustainable Foods has the global rights to use and sell and or license that IP in different markets. I agree. So 2022 also sees a massive delivery of NPD ahead under both our own brand and white label customers like Foodstuffs with the PAMS brand, uh, PAMS plant-based range, looking to be extended in both range and rolled out into their food service channels through Gilmore's and Trent's. We're receiving ongoing inquiries uh, to provide collaborative manufacture services through our facility and will continue to explore these in line with our wider strategy. So, introducing our, our, our brand plant and our clever little asterisk. So, how do we tell the story? Justin's already spoken to our um, pillars, and this is how they flow through to our consumer-facing brand. Obviously, the heart's talking about healthy nutrition, a leaf representing um, our tasty, um, just keep pressing play on that, Paul. Um, a leaf representing uh, plants, representing a tasty eating alternative. A fern, obviously, that uh, we're proudly New Zealand made, and the globe um, acknowledging our responsibilities to Kaitiaki Tanga and caring for our planet. That's all right. Next slide. It's all good. There. So there are plenty of benefits to call out, hitting a few. Protein packed, um, one of the major ones. So our products carry up to 35 grams of protein per 100. And so to put some context around this, we've got chicken sitting between 27 and 31, uh, beef in the ballpark of 26. We're a great source of dietary fiber, obviously not found in animal-based proteins. We're lower in saturated fat, and we've achieved New Zealand vegan certification, which is important because one of the prerequisites for that is being GMO-free. So whilst we might be at the leading edge of new natural food tech, we're not new to the space. With over 40 years of experience, we've got valuable advantage in established long-standing relationships in New Zealand's lead, with New Zealand's leading retail providers, Progressive Enterprise and Foodstuffs, as well as nationally represented customers like Hell Pizza, Burger Wisconsin and Tank to name a few. We're the primary plant-based supplier and to leading hospitality organization, the Caputa Group, across its 35 sites, and are carried by all major food service distributors. We're also really proud to feature on the menus of some of New Zealand's flagship plant-based restaurants like The Botanist, Mockingbird and Nolita, which we headed down to recently to put our soon-to-be-released New Zealand-grown hemp chicken through its paces. Wellington's iconic Cuba Street, an institution in and of itself in the New Zealand hospitality scene. My name's Kyron Ray, co-founder of Sustainable Foods and our brand plant. This morning we're down here at Nolita to show you how to turn these into this. So, are you ready to make some plant-based magic? Let's get inside and see what the team at Nolita and Ben have been up to. Hey guys, my name is Ben. I'm the product development manager for Plant. I'm here in the kitchen with Chef Loic. Loic, what are you going to be making for us today? 
Hello Ben, so today we will use the uh, end chicken for making the chicken parma. Awesome, I can't wait to try it mate, let's get in there. Let's go. The chicken from plants is pretty good chicken. We can cook on the plancha, on the pan, we can deep fries, we can crumb. It keeps the tent texture, so it's pretty amazing. And this is something that, you know, obviously you're a professional chef, it's coming out of a proper kitchen, but this is something that people could do at home, because the flavour the flavor in the, uh, the chicken, exactly. it comes through already, just like you would for a normal piece of chicken, you don't need to drown it with extra flavour, no. it kind of speaks for itself. Exactly, so for this I just put salt, pepper and olive oil, because the flavour of chicken is very perfect as it's seasoning. Nice. So cooking the chicken with a garlic butter for like one or two minutes, and that's going to give it that nice crispy crust on the outside that you yes. can get from chicken anyway. Marinade uh, eggplant with uh, paprika, salt, pepper and olive oil. will be very good with the uh, chicken. So we can see the chicken is very good texture, very soft. To be fair, I eat this stuff straight out of the packet. So uh, ah, yeah? you don't need to convince me to want to eat it. <laughs> so what is this that you make here? I will put some smoked cheese. So that's kind of grill up, kind of like a dairy based halloumi, or is it going to melt? You go uh, like a halloumi. So what's that sauce you've got on top? Salsa rosa. So it's a mayo based uh, uh, vegan. Nice. And uh, some uh, sun dried tomato and some spicy. Mm. And on the bottom it's just uh, cream cheese vegan and uh, herbs. Nice. With a perfect contrast with the chicken, the spicy Beautiful. Beautiful. and the parma. So now everything's ready to go, we're going to start building the burger. Exactly. So I will put the aubergine first after some chicken and on the top the small cheese. So here we go guys. Chicken parma made with our own hemp chicken. You've got the grilled eggplant, that melted, beautiful, crispy halloumi. I can't wait to try it. Come in, have one for yourself. Fantastic. I hope that was uh, hope that was enjoyable. Um, Matt, I think we might have Michelle back online. We do, we do, Fantastic. yeah. Maybe now's a, a good opportunity to introduce uh, Michelle before we uh, get on through the rest of the presentation. Does that work? Sure, go for it. Great. Good morning, uh, everybody, or good afternoon. Um, my apologies, as per usual, your uh, your laptop disappears at the times that you absolutely need it. So great to be with you, Kai, and also the team from Snowball, um, dialing in from Singapore. My background's in business strategy, sustainability, and startups. Um, and I've worked across lots of different industries and geographies. And it's been a great pleasure to be working with Justin and Kai over the last two years to help shape the story that we're bringing to you today. So I'll be jumping in later on in this webinar, but back to Justin and the team. Thanks, Michelle. Nice to have you back. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of quick points on uh, how we've been tracking and, and where we're heading. So we've achieved 850% growth since December 2019, which is when we took full ownership of sustainable foods from a 50-50 joint venture. Um, we've achieved growth of 290, 209% rather, apologies, um, in the first half of 2021 versus the second half, and that's a calendar year. Um, currently, our channel split has changed quite significantly in the domestic market. And that's due to the uh, the challenges and the market shifts as a result of uh, COVID. And we are currently sitting around 75% retail with 25% hospitality. Our current forecast for the financial year ending at the end of March is 1 point million of revenue. The forecast and where we're heading, our absolute goal is 20 million plus forecast uh, targeted by 2025. How are we gonna achieve that, uh, that revenue growth? The key points is extending product ranging in current outlets, primarily through the retail channel, and then also the launch of new products. And we have five main product groups, international sales in the next financial year of just over a million dollars. In financial year 2023, we're targeting 6.8 million of sales, and then taking that through to 2025 with 20 million plus sales, with export making up more than 40% of that. So as a progress update on the things that we have achieved against our strategy and plan that we mentioned earlier on, in the last half of 2021, we consolidated our three different sites into one site uh, in Kapiti, which is a world-class and scalable facility. 
We uh, took the opportunity to have a formal welcome where we had both local and central government, uh, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, Ministry of Primary Industries, uh, Ministry of Business and Education, uh, and Innovation rather, um, and also other important stakeholders. And then also that focused around our key partners being Reddit Institute and Greenfern Industries, which were part of the official launch of our pioneering hemp-based chicken. We um, secured product ranging uh, for the current quarter and the coming quarter with one of New Zealand's top meal kit companies for more than four products. And we hope to be able to announce uh, which company that is in the coming weeks. I'll hand over to Kai for a, for a couple more points of our news, which he's touched on the first one. <laughs> Yes, so again, we've got that funding coming from Callaghan Innovation um, for our research R&D project targeted at exploring viable proteins for the New Zealand topography. We were really proud to take out the New Zealand Arsenal Award Children Deli category and, uh, you know, paint a picture around that. That is not strictly plant-based. That is up against every product in the category. Um, so a real win there. Um, unfortunately, we can't share um, the, the next piece of news with you, but it is coming and we're very, very excited um, at the opportunity to work with this person, um, the alignment and values and, and the profile that that will bring. And then again, um, we've got some fantastic uh, collaborations coming up ahead, um, some more news to announce uh, with Help, um, some further developments with Big Wisconsin um, and uh, the group of restaurants that work with Alita um, in, in the plant-based space ahead as well. Thanks, Kai. So talking about our immediate plans, our absolute focus is completing the current capital raise uh, of between 1.5 and 2 million, is to build a growth team, as I mentioned at the start, to actually deliver on our business strategy. Then outside of our own team is to build wider partnerships, both locally and internationally. Those partnerships in the international market are absolutely key to our success. Further collaboration with the Kapiti Coast District Council, focusing around the Kapiti Food Hub, and also being integrally involved in the F&B strategy and the wider regenerative um, supply chain for the agri-industry here. We're also progressing discussions, uh, which I was on the phone in further meetings yesterday with Kanoa, which is part of NDIE, around extended funding, which is part of our strategic plan and included in the IM and financials. And then lastly, as new product ranges looking to bring plant-based cheeses deli style meats and snacks over the rest of 2022 calendar year and next year as well. A team, we can't deliver with a team and whilst I'd love to, to take up as much time, you know, really uh, giving credit out to the fantastic team. Um, we've got Paul, our marketing manager, who has extensive experience. He's over in, uh, in the corner running the show at the moment. Um, ben, you've been introduced to on the slide. Um, Marie and Shelley and Wayne make up the rest of the team. Uh, with our advisory board, you've just been introduced to Michelle. Uh, the fourth member of that, apart from myself and Kai and Michelle, is Owen Gibson from PwC, uh, who's involved at a, at a strategic level. Um, and then once we complete the current capital raise, we'll then look to put in place the governance board to actually take our strategy forward. And that's mentioned in the IM as well. So look, um, really appreciate your time. Hope you've enjoyed the videos and we'll hand back to Matthew to um, to look at uh, the engagement points from here. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Thanks, Kai. Um, I think probably a good place to start and before Michelle um, gets taken away from us again, um, should we sort of focus in a little bit around some of the questions we've got around the, um, the growth strategy? You're obviously at an inflection point in the business, a very exciting time. You're looking at domestic growth, you're looking at international growth. Michelle, um, are you able to give a bit more flavour around um, the international side of that, that growth plan? Great. Thanks for that question, Matt. You can hear me okay? Yeah. I'm gathering yes. Thank you very much, guys. Um, yeah, we're just having uh, nice lots of problems today, our growth, um, once we've done the domination of the New Zealand market, so to speak. Um, and we started that journey uh, probably about two, uh, about a year ago in terms of investigating it. But before I do that, I just wanted to jump in and talk a little bit about the growth size um, of, the, the, of the market and the investment that's happening. Mm. For those of you who've been through the, the IM, you would have noticed the continued upward projection, whether it be by the BCGs, by 
um, Food Frontiers, by many different organisations talking about the investment that it's attracting. And at the moment, while uh, the, 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 broad, the ranges are broadening um, and the countries are deepening and the brands, the growth overall is the thing that we're focused on internationally. And so if I um, look at the what, what is the work that we've done and where are we targeting? Most people would be aware of the growth in the US and in Europe and UK. But the recent growth in Asia is probably surprising everybody. Um, and that's a couple of twofold. One is the volume of middle wealth growth across the region. Um, but also the region is much more open to having a, I shall, shall I say, not having meat as part of your day-to-day -day diet. And so when we evaluated the options, we looked at really focusing close, closer to home. And that actually syncs up pretty well with sustainability as well, because localization, whether it be in the sourcing of the goods that we have or in the market strategy that we adopt is really important. And so we focused on Asia. Um, we see that as a very large growing market um, with appetite, literally, and also the interest in the product. And so we've been working with NCT, as you would envisage, and also working with specialist uh, international consultants uh, in New Zealand to bring about the detail around that strategy. So we narrowed it down to from, from all of Asia to a couple of target markets. And recently we've pulled that through to being um, focused on Australia as our first pilot market. Uh, we think that that's number one, we have the team have experience in bringing other in, in prior lives of bringing product to Australia. But we also see the customer bases as quite similar, but also the opportunity to differentiate around our hero products as being a really um, strong opportunity for us. And so we're, uh, we, we met up with the NZT guys um, in Australia last year and are furthering those discussions and also discussions that started with different distributors um, looking to finalize the approach for that. And we hope to be a market um, second half of this year. I, I can handle more questions, but um, I think that's probably touches on the highlights for now, Matt. No, that's great. That's fantastic. Thank you. So you, yeah, you touched on the experience that you have already exporting um, and, and the experience you're drawing on from these organizations. Um, um, in terms of the sort of the plant-based um, movement or industry globally, um, you know, some people might look from the outside and look at the share price of, of um, better, um, better uh, beyond meats, sorry, beyond meats, um, and say, well, that's, that's, that's taken a dive since they, they went public. Um, do you know, are there any headwinds that they're seeing just generally in the industry, or is it just that sort of specific fact that it's listed? Um, is it overvalued? What, what's, what's your view on that? Look, um, and, and hats off to, to Beyond and Impossible. They've made some major um, inroads in helping consumers in their journey to understanding how plant-based protein can be part of their day-to-day -day diet. So as, a, as, a, um, as an organization, they've certainly front-footed and helped change consumer patterns. However, they've also chosen to pre place themselves at the really premium end of the market. And so we believe that um, plant-based protein should be accessible for all and should become a part of day-to-day -day diets um, rather than being seen as an extremely exclusive for only those who can afford. So I think one of the things is they started off quite high pricing. Um, I think also uh, their, their penetration into markets has been good. One of the things that's really important to our product, but also to those, uh, to those purchasing it, is that we're actually supporting local business and local entrepreneurship. And I think that is a really important part of the, the value that we're bringing to the table, as Justin talked earlier about our pillars and about New Zealand produced. So um, we envisage their pricing has, well, not envisage, their pricing points have come down over the, the prior years. Ours don't need to because we've already priced them at the right point for the market. And now we're, we're not super commodity and we're not super premium. We're about putting a, a price in place that is accessible and available for all. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of rationalization as you have in new industries, um, but I think we're on really solid footing. Um, the team that you've got in front of you have got really good experience in food production and knowing how these things work and how to estimate the costs and bring about value. Um, and they've also got the relationships. And I think that's one of the key things uh, in this part of the world that makes it a really strong difference. So there's a couple of different shares for you. Yeah, thank you very much. So Justin, if we sort of bring it back to you and think about domestically and the sales process there and the marketing side of things, we've had a couple of questions in around um, around that, around, you know, 
do you have specific strategies in place for marketing that, that make it a bit lower cost because your 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 budget forecast um is can be someone's perceived as being slightly lower than than what one might think for a growth growth business but um i understand you've got a few things in place that that, that you're working with there can you expand on on that a bit please yeah absolutely matthew I think the key point um, in terms of what we stand on, and Michelle's, um, you know, just talked to some of the international valuations, you know, and, and what's going on, and is that a, just an adjustment for um, uh, for essentially, you know, either an over, overvalued company and or product that's actually unrealistically priced. So one of the things we've already taken the move to, and um, to, to go sideways to then come back and answer that, is with our products, our belief is uh, some of the barriers to change are familiar format, knowledge, uh, price parity, um, and then what are the, the reasons that people will then choose our product over others. And so we stand on those products, uh, sorry, those pillars of nutrition, sustainability, New Zealand provenance, um, and also great taste is a real key part. So across all of the feedback that we've had, it's been um, more than 95% positive both in terms of product taste and also in texture. And that's not a journey that's stopped. It's a journey that's absolutely going to continue. In terms of how we address um, the, the marketing and the engagement of our consumers, we are really looking to extend our current community based on those pillars. And so a lot of that is through social engagement and indeed education, and then also enhancing around the social um, environments um, and then the uh, the endorsement of our products by ambassadors and people who share the same values as us. So really looking to extend the plant community a lot wider. That's great. And, and what sort of penetration have you got into domestic um, supermarkets and how long have they been in, in, in market for? Sure. O overall, we've, uh, we, we came into market with our first product um, three years ago. We really took a step um, forward in uh, June last year, which was a result of 18 months work in terms of product, brand, um, and relationship work. So I think it's important when we talk about penetration um, that we understand the numbers that we're talking about as well. If we look at the two major retail chains, uh, the banners being Countdown, and then also under Foodstuffs, we have New Order Pack and Save. Uh, together, uh, those two companies, the, the main and primary stores are, are around 350 plus. But if we then also take into account the wider banners, um, you know, where we look at Super Value, Fresh Choice, Four Squares and further extensions, there's you know, um, 650 plus stores around that. So the metrics that we talk about in the IEM are across those entire store numbers. But to come back and answer the specific question around our current um, core products, in the two or the, the two main retailers with countdown um, we're currently ranged in 85% uh, plus of the stores with the core products we've got in there and with foodstuffs and the main new worlds and, and pack and says um, we're more than 45% ranging on the core lines that being said remembering that we um, did the main launch of these products into market mid last year and then the environment has been very challenging um, we talked about, you know, how are we going to convert and get people to continue to follow our brand and, and go not just have the products on shelf, but actually come into people's baskets and take them home and eat them. Um, a key part around that is the experience of actually eating and tasting the product and being able to do in-store tastings um, has been all but a non-event over the last eight months, effectively, as a result of COVID and conditions related to that hospitality industry, you know, which forms a core part of our business. Um, we've been working really hard with our partners, but they've had restrictions. And so then again, it comes back to we're working as hard as we possibly can under the current market limitations, but all other suppliers and, and customers as well are facing those same challenges. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When a, when a customer goes into store, just thinking about the experience, um, where is the product placed can it be placed in different areas of the store? Where, where's best where, in your mind for, for placing yeah, uh, the product? Well, the, the multi-million dollar question in terms of how long is a piece of string, I think that's a great one, Matthew. Um, I think there's a real key point here is, is we are not looking at this in isolation either from um, you know our seats here in Carpeti or from ourselves as plant and sustainable foods or a food producer You know, with, uh, within this room where we've got 60 years plus experience. 
which makes this all sound really old, but remember it, that's combined experience. It's mostly you. <laughs> um, is we um, are well aware of worldwide trends and also the surveys that have been done in the main um, North American and European markets as well. And the findings that have come out of that and New Zealand's main retailers have also gone across and experienced those markets. I think the key point is that this is about choice. And as we've talked about, it's, a, it's about uh, conscious consumption, choice without compromise. Our target consumer, the 40% plus of flexitarians and meat reducers. So the answer is though, because of that mix of consumers, they don't shop in one specific location in the supermarket. So in Countdown, we have our products in butchery currently and are looking to extend that. Within foodstuffs, um, the, the products can be found either in the butchery or on the chilled shelf and indeed in the frozen section. So for us, having a presence in each of those categories and then it's actually the consumer that gets to choose where they buy the product is a key strategy for us. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And, and Kai, when you, on your business development hunt, are you focusing purely on sort of partnerships with um, quick service restaurants and things like that? Are you getting involved in the, in the supermarkets as well? Uh, we've been in the space for quite a, quite a number of years now, um, Matthew. And so I do have um, engagement with um, category um, manager, uh, managers at, at Progressive and, and also part of the conversation with food stuffs. Um, I, I guess having, you know, carried roles in, um, executive chef and NPD and quality over the years. Um, I'm able to, to talk the language. I understand the pressure cooker of kitchens, um, you know, and, and the realities of um, delivering products quickly. And so, you know, my, my conversations um, and one of, you know, some of my key relationships are with the likes of Callum from Hell, um, who we were going to be shooting a video with this week, but due to Omicron, uh, no major visits to store are allowed, and, and so it's a, it's a bit of a moving feast. But um, no, I certainly lend my hat where I can. Um, and um, again, talking to possibly our store location, I'm talking to butchers. Um, I'm a vegetarian, migrating vegan, if you will. Um, I don't necessarily wear a hat or a badge, um, but I come from a long line of uh, beef growers and butchers in Taranaki. Um, I can go into a you know, I've entered sausage competitions as a chef. I can go and talk to um, butcher, um, chill shelf managers and, and butchers in, in supermarkets as well, as well as category managers for butchery and countdown. And um, to Justin's point about appealing to a wide range of people, um, one of the um, key promotions that we've participated in, and, and again, to Michelle's point about our pricing um, positioning, is the three for 20 promotion and countdown. So addressing the, um, you know, everyone's family is touched now with people who are making these decisions. And so the three for 20 allows us that access of walking down the aisle, you know, steak for mum, piece of chicken for dad, and plant-based option for son, daughter, or, or the member of the family that is making these decisions. And you can get those whole that, that whole selection for the family and, and cover all bases, if you will, for $20. So yeah, broadening the approach. I think maybe just to, just to add a couple of points there, Matthew, if I can. Um, so coming back to the retailers and, and their location of the products, um, there is a real drive amongst uh, some of them, whether it be at an individual store level or a corporate level, uh, to actually create a in-store plant-based section um, that is clear from the different uh, categories. So that is a movement, um, but that being said, that multi-category is still a key part. Probably just... Sorry, Justin, go on. Oh, that's right. I was also just going to touch base on, um, you know, you are asking around, um, you know, sales. The the key part is that we actually need to ensure that, you know, the responsibility for achieving those sales is very clear. Um, at the moment, the domestic revenue, the responsibility for that uh, with food service and hospitality sits with Kai. And then with retail, the overall responsibility sits with Paul. Yeah, I should have said that, sorry. Yeah, that's good. But a key part in terms of our use of our funds, you know, is to invest in our three core areas, you know, uh, being our product and also our plant and equipment to actually produce the product and then in people. So um, when we've completed the current round, we'll then be investing further in our people to complete those duties. And at that stage, the responsibilities for domestic sales will sit with one person overall 
with the expectation that that will be a product manager who has responsibility for revenue and also margin on the products as well. Right. I mean, if we keep on the theme of people, um, Ed's asked a question around um, who's bringing in the sort of the business now. So we've got sounds like we've got great product people. Who's bringing the business now? So I, you know, I would say the whole exec team it shares that sort of business now, so including the advisors, Michelle, PwC. But perhaps you can just give a bit more flavour, um, guys, around uh, around your experience in that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, so I suppose the, the key point there is um, who's bringing in the, the business now and indeed is it proven or any good? <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll probably hark back to, to myself. As I mentioned, you know, we've built um, half a dozen successful businesses over the last 25 years, all primarily in the FMCG and food manufacturing space. Kai's mentioned his expertise around um, both chefing, but also operations and food safety, working through that. With Paul, our marketing manager, has extensive experience, uh, both domestically and internationally, uh, with three uh, very large um, global corporates. And then in turn, Michelle, um, as she's mentioned, on the business strategy um, and startup uh, areas, and also specific, specific expertise in the sustainability area as well. Yeah, I think the key point here is that you, as you mentioned before, you're you've got this great exec team, this great advisory board, but you're also going to install this governance board. So you know, you still keep surrounding yourself with with the relevant people, the relevant stages that are going to help you get to your plan, which is which is great. Um, question coming around, sort of competitive analysis. Can we have some further competitive analysis? Are you able to just sort of shed light on the New Zealand competitive competitive landscape? Um, a little bit, um, and then perhaps you know, we, we, Michelle sort of touched on the international space, but um, maybe we could broaden that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll probably touch on on the domestic scene, um, and then maybe uh, Michelle can can uh, come in on the international side of things. I think what we've seen is um, for us and our interpretation in terms of what's been going on is um, we talk about the need. Um, you know, and the need is around, um, you know, population growth and current systems not scalable and climate change, you know, and then the one of the key points being um, a diet that's higher in um, vegetables and plants is scientifically proven to be better for you. So if we come back to our pillars, you know, being nutrition, sustainability, NZ provenance, you know, and great taste, I think in the um, in this area, um, one of the things that's been lacking for the last couple of decades is delivery of great taste and in turn also delivery of great texture. Um, and we've had fantastic feedback across the board from the consumer groups that we've actually engaged with. And so that brings me around to the point in terms of talking about the competitors. We definitely have uh, domestic competitors in New Zealand, but really for us, um, those are focusing on a single line of products, um, whereas we have multi groups of products. And indeed, a lot of the competitors that are actually on the shelf currently are actually international products um, that carry, obviously, a pretty high footprint around sustainability, but also a pretty hefty price premium as well. And as we've mentioned, from, from our view, um, we've, we've looked into it and ensure that um, we're not looking at uh, our products being placed in the super premium category. Um, nor are they in the commodity end of things, which is delivering on our principles, um, sorry, on our pillars. And so the key point is we've already addressed that price parity to provide a really good offering with a fantastic taste, um, great textual delivery, and also stood on our pillars. So we think we have a real edge in the market, and that's all about executing on our business plan, you know, and again, investing in our team and the structure behind that on the completion of the capital raise. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you could um, just touch on your thoughts on, on the international market for competitors. Yeah, sure. Um, so look, um, building on what you were saying about the, the customer type as well, I think one of the interesting things in, in this part of the world as an outside of outside of New Zealand is um, we're also then appealing to vegetarians and vegans. So we're going to get best, best of both worlds where we've got basically people who are flexitarians and then also the other side of the camp. So You've got some of the traditionals that we talked about earlier, like Beyond and Impossible, um, who've made greater roads and entry into this part of the world. Um, you've also got some regional players, um, things like Omnipork, 
And it's an interesting, and the reason I bring out Omni Pork in particular is they've really catered for Asian tastes. And so Justin and Kai talked earlier about our white meat alternate, um, which at the moment we're um, we're pulling through as chicken, um, with, with the asterisks, of course. Um, and that in itself is a really appetite, you know, appealing product in this market, as is pork. And so that their, their specialization in this area has come through quite strongly. Um, there's also um, local players. So Singapore's become quite a hub for starting up new players. So some of you have done some investigation online in, in the last week or so, may have noticed products around brands called Tyndall, um, Piranha. There's been a lot of investment in this region, but the competition changes quite a lot when you come to Asia away from a traditional red meat alternate or white meat alternate. That's where you start to see a lot more about jackfruit or mushrooms or and dot, dot, dot. And so the competition broadens. But having said that, um, sustainability linked to the product is still fairly early um, in its uh, in its genre, I would say, up here. Um, and so the the linkage that our product is, has brought through in the brand um, is a really critical thing. And New Zealand products are seen really, really well outside, especially in Asia. Um, and so we believe that that's something that we can really draw on in the competition, um, as well as the uniqueness um, of the, the product and its taste. Thanks. So with, with hemp, are you, are you the only guys using hemp in your products in this way? I think that, um, so hemp has been used in um, a number of dietary forms as it's been worked through approvals and regulations over the years. Um, as a primary substrate for a product, um, our chicken alternate, our hemp chicken, is regarded as a world first. Mm. So as, uh, as far as we're aware, um, there is no one else doing it. Um, so it's very exciting to be bringing this one out. Um, I think possibly to Michelle's comments as well um, about New Zealand provenance and, and competitive analysis. Um, if, if I can leave a question hanging, possibly, and throw it back at you. Um, what's to say that what's been done with other food industries from New Zealand and the reason and the motivations for people buying those products can't be done with plant-based? Yeah, that's right. I think um, probably just to, to add into the, the first part of the question, Matt, you know, um, with hemp as, as a world first, um, we got recognised um, and shortlisted uh, in the top 10 out of 250 global entrants last year with Future Food Asia, with the focus being our hemp chicken. Um, so I think that in itself is, is great recognition um, of the steps that we're actually taking in the journey we're going through. But, you know, that being said, um, that is our current focus and, and will continue to be, we believe, our, our hero product. But that's only the first step in the journey. You know, we will continue to develop new products with novel proteins that will keep us at that front edge of uh, the plant-based alternates and indeed the competition. That's super exciting. When Remind us again when, when the, the, the hemp chicken's um, in the market. Uh, so it's already in the market in food service, and we're hoping to bring that to um, to the retail environment uh, in in the coming coming weeks. Yeah. So to to possibly paint a little bit around that, um, we've done selected acti selected activities with um, a, a number of customers in the food service space. As we've um, had the opportunity to work with Hell Pizza, um, they did a really edgy promotion called Frank and Chicken, um, where they put it up next to their greatest selling pizza of all time which was their death by chicken. Um, I pitched no death by chicken, but they went with Frank and chicken. Um, and that sold a ton in a week and we couldn't keep up. It just flew out the door or, or flapped out the door, it didn't flap. Um, we also worked with um, Tank towards the end of last year with a um, promotion called their Vegan Cowboy. Um, and the formats, two entirely different uses for this product. Um, how Southern Fried style um, with tank raw and shredded directly into a wrap, which um, you know covers the grounds of what you'd be doing with this product. That's great, and it's so exciting. And, and um, there's, you know, as you've sort of mentioned, you've got some great products coming to market. There's a few bits and pieces already in there. You know, obviously not of the same sort of quality. Um, but is there? Leon's asked a question around um, strategies being put in place to convert more people to being more plant-based. Are you part of a wider conversation with other organizations, other companies to try and push that agenda on? How, how are you approaching that side of things? 
Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I'll, I'll probably speak to the first part of that, and then Kai can um, definitely uh, definitely join in on that on on some of our social engagement as well. Um, so for us, New Zealand is a small market for a start, okay, and we've always taken the approach that collaboration is really key, um, and we want to collaborate both uh, with um, our primary ingredient source, you know, then right through to other producers to actually ensure that we can actually grow the category and indeed provide as much education around this um, as we possibly can. So we're doing that jointly. I suppose one of the other areas that we've worked really, really hard on in the last two years is, um, you know, the old thing of glass houses. There's no point in us sitting in our own office here going, we're going to take the world by storm if we're not actually out there talking to all levels of stakeholders. Um, so we mentioned our opening uh, here last uh, late last year, where we had NZTE, um, MPI, MBIE, um, and, and the wider group, especially with Carpenter Council um, and the Economic Development Board. So we're really ensuring to work, you know, and we've built these relationships over the last two years, multi-level, both local, central government, um, and then in turn leading on to the wider reach of, of our um, customer and social engagement community. Yeah, and, and uh, I think another validating um, factor in this uh, in, in that question is meat companies know their customers, and all of the major meat companies are investing in plant-based products. So you know we're not touting a, a strange conversion to people; it, it, it's happening. And I think it's a real privilege, or I find it a real privilege to work in this space and, and the use of the word collaboration. Um, We've all seen some really fantastic brand collaborations over the years. Um, you know, X chocolate brand with X uh, a creamy milk brand. Um, you know, lo lovely product and, you know, queues out the supermarket doors at 7 a.m. for it. Um, but those are brands very much collaborating, whereas what we find in, in, in the plant-based space is invariably the people that operate within it have a higher driver. Well, they're doing it for some either ethical, environmental, or, or nutritional driver. And so when you start talking about collaboration in this space, you actually really get it in the true sense because when you succeed, you're helping them to achieve their bigger goal. Um, a really good example of this is our work with Picano Foods, um, who are a fantastic company down in Christchurch. Um, they make some similar products to ours. Um, we work with them in the capacity of providing them with meat-based alternate um, bases for their, their products. Some of their products sit on similar shelf positions to ours. And what that means is that we're both benefiting here, here them by um, capability that they don't have to invest in, us by an uplift in volume, and us both by controlling more shelf space, which is really, really important for the New Zealand plant-based industry. I mean, we have been beholden to the big international players importing um, massive uh, advertising budgets for quite some time. And so we're really carving a space by collaborative growth in the plant-based industry. And that's driven by people being interested and looking for it. And again, it's that New Zealand provenance story. It's that quality point of difference. Um, I only need to think back to yesterday when our product was put beside one of those other two major players and preferred above it. Um, I can say that our product was... Uh, one of those major players tended for the Caputa contract and our product won against it. Um, so, you know, it's it's really great to be able to, to share those stories, particularly from a New Zealand made perspective. And, and, and again, the reason why people are buying New Zealand, sorry, Michelle, New Zealand based products, I, I believe that they will buy New Zealand plant based products for the same reason. Let me just tag on the end there. And you can tell from Kai, and that, um, that's the point that I wanted to touch on is the passion that the team are bringing to the table and the commitment to actually bring this to market. And I think there's, this is one of the things you might go, is it just a job? And these guys are doing a, a, you know, a good pitch. Um, yeah, it is a job, but this is actually about so much more. And I think that's one of the really unique things about this investment. Um, when organizations, both with their customers and with their employees and with the people that they work with, we're creating something bigger and better. And you might say, yeah, really? But actually, this is about creating something that's important to our futures, to our kids and to our kids' kids, where actually we can learn to eat better. We can actually learn to sustain the planet better and create a better future. And I think this is a very unique value proposition, both for corporates and their ability to connect with their stakeholders, but also to chart a future that is working together because no one company 
can end up to, you know, take, taking on the, the battle of sustainability alone. And so I think it's, a, it's it does unite passion and does bring people together in a very different way in their consumption patterns. So thanks, Kai. I just wanted to build on that. No, that's brilliant. And that's certainly one of the things that attracts me to this this business is all the way through the chain is the, the touch points of sustainability. I think it's a, a, an incredible commitment. Um, now, we've only got time for a, a couple more short ones, I think. Um, I think we should touch on um, risk around strategy execution, particularly from COVID. Um, that question is coming from, from Ed. Um, how are we approaching that? Do the forecasts take that into account? You know, what, what's happening there? Yeah, cool. Um, certainly acknowledge the question, and it's a question that um, you know all of us on the webinar today, and the whole country, and and the whole world's actually working to cope with. I think um, the good thing is we are in a um, environment, you know, or an industry that, unlike tourism, um, we all need to eat every day. So that's uh, <laughs> that's probably the the foremost point. Um, that being said, the challenges within the current operating environment there definitely are challenges. We've, uh, we've taken a reasonable stance on our forecasts in terms of both uh, not over forecasting nor being ultra conservative as well. And so we've looked at um, the forecasts, you know, down to individual store levels, individual product levels, and indeed the hospitality channel and working through those. So the forecasts that we have put forward we believe are realistic and we can only um, take the assumption that the current environment that we're in in New Zealand, um, look, uh, uh, certainly I'm not holding up the political handle, the answer to, to COVID here. Uh, hopefully we are in a period that is going to be over in the coming months and we'll be able to move forward with confidence. That being said, uh, uh, I or, or anybody else in the room, I don't think can actually um, predict that with, with absolute confidence. So. The forecasts that we've got in place are based on the information that we have. Um, and I think Michelle might have a comment to add just on the international front there. Yeah, look, I think in some ways, like everything, there's a silver lining, right? And so what it was, what it's um, led us to is looking at how we can accelerate some of our localized sourcing and how we can work with uh, the ecosystem to try and bring some of that about. So I think, you know, again, there, there's different perspectives, but also it's, it's impacting on our our uh, plans for online channel um, and I think we're looking to accelerate that as well so um, albeit um, the, the ground is still a bit uncertain I think we've also had you know uh, I'm not going to say how many months but we've had a good long while of experience of it now it's not like it's just hitting us and no one knows we, we're used to rolling with the punches we understand how to manage during those processes and have done so um, right, last couple of questions I can probably answer. Um, one from Stephen, how will um, sustainable foods as to shareholders and sell their share in the future? So this is talking about um, an exit. So Stephen, um, when you invest into a private company, um, it, it means it's, it's a relatively illiquid investment. You can't easily be traded away. So you're investing into sustainable foods for the long term until you can start to see um, that return either for, the, for an exit. Um, which is a, a trade sale or um, they decide to list um, or through um, any return on investment through a uh, dividend which um, in this instance there's no intention to um, uh, supply any dividend. Matt, sorry, just, I'm not sure that it's just us but your, your audio is going quite quiet. Oh goodness, sorry. Is that any better? Should I come closer? No better? Speak oh, louder. No. <laughs> A soft English tones. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, exit through a trade sale or um, a, a, a listing, uh, IPO, or through dividends. There's no intention to, to provide any dividends um, over the next few years, um, but the, the board will always reserve the right to do that. Um, so, long story short, um, you're investing in sustainable foods for a period of time. You won't see an exit until those scenarios that I've, I've talked about. So it's a relatively illiquid investment. But you're helping a, a solid Kiwi company grow, get to the stage where it's going to go into the international stage um, and provide a return. Um, in terms of recording, uh, Glenn's asked where we can view a recording of the webinar. We'll send that round to everyone afterwards, Glenn. So, um, as the fact that you've, um, you've, you've uh, 
you come on to the webinar, we've got the email address, so we'll just send that through to you. you no problem at all. Um, I think that's about all the time we've got. Um, if any more questions um, come through, if anyone has any more questions they want to get answered by the team, click them through to me on email, matt at snowballeffects.co.nz, um, and I'll get those answered for you. But for now, thank you very much all for coming. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Michelle. Terrific presentation, great answers, great questions from the floor. Um, and we look forward to engaging with you on, on this investment um, offer in the coming days. If anyone's got any questions, please we offer specifically. Again, please come straight to me. Thank you very much, and um, we shall hopefully see you again. Thanks, Thanks so much. very much. Thank you much, everyone.